Hello, everybody. This is Burge, bringing you guys another replay commentary. Gonna be doing a Rubik game today. I played this hero, uh, I don't know, like five days ago, four days ago, three days ago, something like that. Um, and he's actually one of my most played, but I just haven't made a video of him in, the, in a while. So thanks again for voting on the website, guys. Again, if you guys want to vote for the next hero for me to play, just click the drop down box and follow the links to my website. You'll have to make an account. But then you can vote for your favorite heroes on the right side or heroes that I haven't played in forever. And it's so helpful because I've already like banged out like five or six heroes that so you guys really want to see. Maybe the gameplays weren't the best, but hopefully you guys learned a lot about the heroes. So, um, for me, playing the heroes well, I just need to stream more. And speaking of streaming, I haven't done it since I got back. Sorry about that. I kind of forgot about it for like the first four days because I hadn't streamed in like three weeks because I've been gone. Um, but I'm definitely going to work on it soon. So, uh, stream, I can't stream today because I have to go do my interview for the pre TSA pre-check. Um, but afterwards, probably not, but tomorrow I'm going to try to stream. So, hopefully tomorrow's stream. And I will be doing that early Pacific time. Um, in the US if you guys are curious what time it'll be most likely. Okay, so let's talk about Rubik. Rubik is a very popular hero um, 40th popularity, I thought it was a lot higher than this um, Okay, 40th popularity overall middle of the pack support um, Not the most popular hero. I thought it would be more But it's not um, This skill build is actually correct one of the first times I've ever seen that but let's talk about his skills first um your first skill is telekinesis. You lift somebody in the air, which stuns them for up to 2.25 seconds. And then after that duration ends, you get to choose where you throw them to. And then where they land, there's another AOE stun. Um, it does not re-stun the target you're throwing. It starts his friends or his allies, stuns his friends or allies around that. Uh, the cast range goes up by leveling up telekinesis. And the cast point is extremely small at 0.1 seconds. It's pretty much instant. So all, all Rubik's cast points are very, very small. Uh, one of the few heroes that does have small cast points, so... Um, basically, what you want to do with telekinesis is, it's it's not a very long cooldown, by the way, that's the most important thing to remember, it's a 22 second cooldown, it's massive, but the reason for that is because of his ultimate, I'll talk about that later, but basically telekinesis can and should be used to set up kills on your opponents, to counter initiate, um, and also the important thing is to move them, so not only does it stun them, but also pushes them closer towards you, so it gives you more time to right click them. That's where the real value in the skill comes from most of the time. And occasionally you can do things like cliffing your opponents where you lift them in the air and you throw them on the high ground and they're not able to get down until later. That's really important as well. This is your sub skill. This is you casting it to choose where it goes. It's actually not a W. These uh, these these hotkeys on Dota buff here are, are listed as wrong. But you basically lift with one hotkey, like Q for example, and then you press that same hotkey again to go to a different direction uh, before they land and then they get teleported there or get, they get thrown there. Uh, your main nuke is Fade Bolt. It only does 280 damage. It's a bit weak for that, but it does bounce. And every time it bounces, it does slightly less damage by 4%. When it hits heroes, it reduces the damage they do. When it hits creeps, it reduces the damage that they do. And right clicks. And the debuff lasts for 10 seconds. At level 4, the cooldown is 10 seconds. So this is a pretty important ability to throw out at the start of the fight, just because it does reduce the damage that your opponents do. But it's generally, that's a part of the hero that's pretty much ignored. You don't think about that part very much. Keep in mind, though, that his level 1 and 2 abilities are pretty expensive. In fact, Rubik is not a very good pre-level 3 hero. At level 2, he has a skill point in Telekinesis. Telekinesis does 0 damage. And he has 1 point to Fade Bolt, which does 70 damage. So he doesn't have very high damage nukes. And his input is decent. But he doesn't have enough where he can just throw these around willy-nilly. So usually you only want to use Telekinesis and right clicks in the early game, and only use Fade Bolt if you can guarantee a kill, basically. That's kind of how the hero works. His third skill is a passive, it's called No Field. It adds a magic resistance aura to your team. This is sometimes very good to level up, but generally people will max out both Telekinesis as well as Fade Bolt equally. Some kind of lineups where a maxing out No Field is good is against heroes like Leshrac. Um, against Zeus, things like that. It allows your team to tank up a bit more. Now, personally, for Rubik, he doesn't. this doesn't help him very much because his strength gain is really awful, 1.5 per level. So he doesn't get that much survivability from no field, but it helps out your team a lot, so it's generally worth getting in the later game. But there are there might be some games where you just don't level it up. But there's a lot of games where you do level it up, definitely. So usually Telekinesis, you'll get at least two levels. And then in the later game, you might max out no field before you finish telekinesis, but telekinesis is such a good stun. 2.25 seconds is a pretty big duration, and the AOE stun of 1.75 is a huge duration. So you can actually do a lot with a, with a good lift into throw it into their team kind of a thing. All right, spell steal is your ultimate. It's what makes Rubik the most special hero, more or less. It allows you to steal an ability from an opponent. So whatever they last casted, you steal that spell. 
Now there's some things you, there's a lot of things you can't steal. You can't steal passives. You can't steal anything that doesn't activate basically. So if, for example, here's an example. Uh, let's say you, let's say Spirit Breaker has never cast any spells and he's only skilled his passive, the movement speed aura, and you try to steal it from him. If he hasn't activated it, you can't steal it. If he activates it, you can steal it. That's like one of the only passives you can steal due to the fact that you can activate it. But almost everything else just goes straight forward. If somebody casts a spell, you steal it. For example, if I know a Tide is about to Ravage, and I cast Spell Steal on him, and then he Ravages immediately afterwards, the way Spell Steal works is, as soon as you cast it, it starts this green orb from his opponents, and it it's not super slow, but it's a little slow, and it eventually gets to Rubik. So between the point where I cast Spell Steal and where it gets to me, if they cast a spell in there, then that is the spell that I steal. So sometimes to steal Ravage from a Tide Hunter, you have to like cast Spell Steal as he's casting Ravage. So you have to anticipate it. Same thing with other spells. If you want to steal things like Reverse Polarity or Black Hole. Black Hole is pretty easy to steal because it's a 4 second channel, for example. But there's a lot of spells that you have to be very talented to steal. And that's why Rubik is one of the highest skill cap supports. And why, they're, depending on the patch, he can be extremely strong. Now, OG did use him a couple times during the Frankfurt Major to win their tournament. Uh, Crit plays an amazing Rubik. But there's a lot of other very, very good Rubiks. Uh, here's Crit. Second place Rubik on Dota buff. Um... A lot of these other players are maybe not known for their Rubik, but probably one of the other best Rubiks in the world is FY. FY plays on Vichy Gaming. He's super talented. So basically, the, you might look at his skills and be like, wow, he's got a 22-second cooldown telekinesis. That's so long, and it is. He's got a nuke that's decent, but not amazing. And yeah, it's decent, not amazing. It does have a 10-second AoE in a way, so that's pretty good. And no field is pretty much a crappy spell in a lot of ways, a crappy ability, until you get it to like level 4. Each skill point of it is really bad, I think. Um... But the real value comes in at spell steal. It's your ultimate, by the way. So look, think of the value that it gives you like this. And I'm going to talk a lot about this because I think it's important to understand why Rubik is strong and understanding how you should play him. Um, all heroes in the game essentially have have an ultimate. Most most heroes have an ultimate. And ultimates are obviously very strong, right? Um, but the, the issue is that ultimates are on a long cooldown and they require you to hit level 6. And a lot of heroes are based around entirely, or they're balanced around their ultimate. So Tide Hunter, for example. Gush is a pretty good spell. Kraken Shield's an okay spell. And Anchor Smash is a pretty good spell. But those three together, you'd look at them and be like, you know, this hero kind of sucks. Like, compared to somebody like Lina, who has, like, Light Striker, you can stun somebody, you can attack faster with Fiery Soul. Those three basic abilities seem a lot better, right? Some heroes just have ultimates that aren't that great. And you sometimes skip them, even. But the value for Rubik here is that it allows you to steal an, a spell that somebody else finds valuable. So you take the best parts of every other hero and you add them to your toolkit. Your toolkit is pretty okay, it's average, and you put a good toolkit in. And the cool part is sometimes you can use your spell steal twice in a fight. So for example, let's say I stole Ravage in the previous fight. I could use Ravage in the next fight and then steal another spell and in a way get two ultimates out of Rubik instead of just one. That's where the value in Rubik comes in. That's the ultimate value. The basic skill value is also massive. Think about it this way. Let's say you hit level 6 on Rubik, you have 3 in Fade Bolt, you have 2 in Telekinesis, and then you go to a lane and you find a Leshrac, for example, and he's maxed out Split Earth. He's got 4 points in Split Earth, and you steal a Split Earth. And as a level 6 hero, you now have 3 points in Fade Bolt, you have 2 points in Telekinesis, and you have 4 points in Split Earth. It's basically like you have an extra 3 levels than you should at that point. So pre-level 10 or so, you get that massive value from stealing basic skills. And it also gives you the benefit of two nukes. And that's where we don't see on a lot of heroes as well. There's a lot of heroes that become very that are very strong because they have two nukes. Like Lina, for example. She has Light Strike Array and she has Split Earth. And both of those together do a lot of damage. A lot of heroes only have one nuke. Like Rubik, for example. He's got a stun, which does no damage. And he has Fade Bolt, which does damage. But all of a sudden, you couple that with an ability that does stun and damage. And all of a sudden, Rubik has two stuns and he has two nukes. Which you can do so many cool things with that. You can stun stack with yourself. You can double nuke with yourself. Even as a little support. So getting 6 on Rubik really fast can really give you a lot of benefit. But the real benefit is from stealing spells that are accurate. And that are good. And that allow you to benefit. Another really great ability to steal Burrow Strike from Sanking. If you steal Burrow Strike on Rubik, you have two ways to stun. You can initiate by telekinesis somebody and then you can burrow strike them afterwards or you can burrow strike to initiate or get a blink dagger and start doing aoe burrow strikes constantly on the enemy team there's so many big values it's not just about the big ultimate steals it's also about the basic skill steals and using those abilities correctly so it helps to know 
what all the heroes do and have a little bit of a feel about how good their abilities are because it helps you play Rubik better. But as a whole, I, I think that's all I really need to say about his abilities. Oh yeah, you can also get an Aghanim Scepter, which decreases your cooldown down to like 4 seconds. And um, you can also... It increases the range of it. That The Aghanims is pretty good. But it's situational when you're able to buy it. These are pretty common items that you buy. Blink Dagger, Arcane Boots, Glimmer Cape, Point Booster, which would build an eggs, obviously. And Gem. Wand is very good. Um, and as you can see, these are the most common items. Magic Wand, Force Staff is situationally really good. Aghanim Scepter gives you a high win rate, because if you get an Ags on Rubik, you're probably winning anyways. Yule sometimes is good. I don't like this very much, um, personally. I don't think it's worth building, because Rubik's HP is frankly too low. Uh, Yule's is not going to give that much survivability. Excuse me. If I was really worried about an Orchid hero, like a Storm, or Clinks or something, I would buy a Ghost Scepter rather than a Yule Scepter. Um, that's generally what you should be able to buy. Glimmer Cape's really good as well, though. Uh, it allows you to initiate, it allows you to save allies, but generally Glimmer Cape is not even close to what it was in the past. Um, I, I think Glimmer Cape is becoming into a, into a realm where it is very situational in its purchase. It used to be really overpowered, now it's just pretty good. But generally, sometimes there's better items to build. <coughs> Excuse me. Occasional Bracer pickup is good as well, because again, your HP is very low. I've seen a lot more supports in the pro scene recently doing this. Um... Urn of Shadows I like a lot as well, because it gives you a second nuke source. Keep in mind, when you use an urn offensively, it does 150 pure damage over time. Over 8 seconds, of course. But the important part is it does a lot of damage. Um, and it adds to your damage that you currently have, and it gives you HP, and it gives you mana regen. Some other boot options, if you don't want to go Arcane Boots, you can go Tranquils with a Soul Ring. That's also possible. And the games that I would recommend doing that are games where your opponents have very good physical damage carries that can easily jump on you. So an example of that is like a TA or a PA. Templar Assassin or Phantom Assassin. Here's I can get on top of you and kill you very fast. It's because that four armor that the Tranquil gives you is a massive damage. It's a massive increase. It, it can it can easily be the difference between you getting two shot or three shot, or the difference between you getting three shot and four shot. And that difference might be enough for you to stun them and stay alive or go scepter or four staff. So a lot of times Tranquil Boots is very valuable for that reason alone. Now here's your good against. Pretty straightforward. Heroes that have really easy and strong spells to steal. Uh, Omni Knight, you can steal Repel, you can Chain Disable, uh, you can steal Purify. There's a lot of things you can do to turn fights around against Omni Knight. Um, even still, your win rate against Omni is not bad. It's, or it's not good. It's 36%. Because keep in mind, Rubik's overall win rate is 44.5%. Um, you're good against Enigma because you can steal his Black Hole very, very easily and turn things around there. Jakiro, you can steal things like Ice Path. Ice Path is a great ability to steal because it is a, at level 4 it has a 9 second cooldown and a 2.2 second stun. And the other cool part is that Rubik has no cast time on the spells that he steals. They're only All of his casts are 0.1 seconds. Whereas Jakiro's cast point on Ice Path is really long. If you've ever played Jakiro, it takes forever to land the Ice Path. It's a little hard to throw. But Rubik, he throws it instantly, so it gives him a lot of benefit there. The spell becomes better. Crystal Mania, you can steal her ultimate. You can steal her other spells. You can easily interrupt her ultimate. That's probably why she's there. You can steal Chain Frost, pretty straightforward. Um, and then these other heroes are mediocre advantages, not not massive, so not too surprising. Here's your bad against. None of these are really that extreme, so it's pretty safe to say that as a whole, Rubik is just safe against a lot of stuff. Because honestly, the anything below two percent, I at this point I basically just say is pretty negligible. You're not really particularly amazing at any of these things. So despite the advantage here, uh, because TA again just ends up two or three shotting you. If you get ahead of TA, then you can generally deal with her as well. So, makes a lot of sense here. All right, let's take a look at the hero meta statistics. So, if we look at Rubik, he has a 46.45 win rate at the 5k plus level. And down at the 2k mark, he's at 42%, which is okay. Uh, not amazing. Well, this is bad, but this is all right. It's not amazing, but Rubik still does end up getting picked in the pro scene for a couple of reasons. Uh, mainly because players that are amazing at spell steal can push the hero up until 50% or so. But even a 5k player like myself, it's not that easy to play Rubik. Rubik is very difficult. And he is actually one of my most played heroes here. I have a 56% win rate, which I, is higher than I thought it was going to be. Because there was a lot of there's a long period of time where I tried playing Rubik a lot and I just couldn't get it. But I feel a little bit better on him at the moment. So with that said, let us remove this and we can go into the game. And we can take a look at my game. So there's a lot of things that we'll cover here. I played this game with Dummy and Chachi, who's a three stack, and we were playing ranked, I believe. Yeah, we were playing plain ranked. So it was ranked party, so it wasn't the same as like an unranked game where I'm stomping people kind of a thing. 
Uh, good times to pick Rubik um, with Luna is really good because he helps makes up for the fact that Rubik has very little damage because you get the Lunar Blessing, so I get 14 bonus damage whenever I right-click. So Luna, Rubik, Trilanes are very, very common. Um, Rubik's pretty good against Slardar as well, in my opinion, because you do have an instant disable, plus you can steal his abilities, which are great. Uh, Slithian Crush is an amazing ability, 2.5 second stun on an 8 second cooldown, and Amplify Damage is also an amazing ultimate to steal. 5 second it's cooldown, you can apply massive amounts of minus armor to somebody. Both of those are great. Um, other good abilities to steal, Shackle Shot's pretty good, Power Shot's pretty good, Magic Missile's amazing, because it gives you a lot of early game advantage, you can steal things like Swap. Um, Splinter Blast, Arctic Burn, Winter's Curse, pretty much all of these are ability, all these abilities on Winter Wyvern are also very good to steal. Keep in mind you can only steal your opponents, of course, you can't steal your allies' spells. And the last two heroes will speed this up here. Shadow Got a Shadow Fiend, Fiend on the opponents. Shadow Fiend doesn't have the best abilities to steal because uh, it's kind of hard to steal good ones. Usually you're just going to steal a raise. You won't necessarily steal like... Um, you won't steal his uh, ultimate that often, but if you do steal his ultimate, it's amazing. It is amazing, man, because it, it does full damage, basically. It's based on his souls, not, not uh, your souls. So it still does full damage. And a lot of times people won't focus the Rubik and just throwing it out in the team fight slows everybody and uh, makes them do less damage. I just got this new Rubik cape. It's pretty cool. Uh, I am not selecting my hero. Okay, there's my items. All right. So the problem was I played GemTD right before this game, so I didn't have Legacy on, so my hotkeys were slightly wrong. So what I was trying to do here right now, I was trying to lift Shadowfiend right now and throw him up. But instead what I did is I pressed the wrong hotkey. He still stayed very long. I want to pause this for a sec and explain what I did. I basically, I clipped him, right? So first of all, I placed an Observer Ward here, which is a big mistake. That is my mouse, my right forward mouse key. So I must have pressed that while I was trying to click on him. But I tried to lift him and I realized the hockey was wrong and that's why it took so long. So anyways, I lifted him. The only way to cliff somebody is you lift them when they're close to a cliff like this. And you have to send them here. If you send them here, they will not get cliffed because it doesn't let you cliff that way. But you can technically still cliff. And the way you cliff is by lifting and throwing them past that point. So the telekinesis throws them as far as possible and then they can get cliffed. So we actually did cliff the Shadow Fiend here. Very important cliffing thing. Got stunned here by the bench, and uh, normally what you actually do at this point is you put an Observer Ward on the high ground, and you just kill the, the enemy mid. <laughs> or you leave them there for a while, and then kill them later. But basically what happened is I completely fucking forgot that I clipped this guy. <laughs> and we put that Observer Ward down, which should have been on the high ground, so to put another one above there would be kind of a waste. But we really should actually be doing that. Now, with Venge being here, I'm just going to eat a, eat a tree there and then lift him up and throw him back. This is pretty straightforward kill. It's not very safe for him to go up like that. But with the Shadow Fiend dead, he probably felt a little confident to come up and last hit. So this is basically what you should do. Now, I didn't realize this. You could see his animation there, but he was actually cliff jungling. Because of the fact that we left him there and he's right next to a camp, he actually is getting experience in gold. I do block the small camp here a little bit late, obviously, because the small camp is respawned. But I completely forgot that that stuff was there, and what should have happened is when we, when the Luna fell safe, me and the Venge, or me and the Disruptor should shift over, put the ward on the high ground, and kill the Shadow Fiend. If we check our scoreboard, he's level 1 right now. He just got his first CS. Uh, but I should be checking the scoreboard and see if he's leveling up. But I didn't think about him doing the, the, uh, doing the, um, the spot. If I played more Rubik, I would have thought of that. But basically, right now, we're looking for more kills. All we need to do is lift somebody close to the creep wave and throw them close. Oh, he, he flew right into me. Always attack a few times before you throw your abilities. And this should be a pretty... Pretty guaranteed kill. Pretty easy. Same principle, basically. You don't let them know where you are, and then when they're a little out of position, you lift them, you throw them by, by your allies, and you just attack, like, a bunch of times. So Rubik works a little bit better with teams and players that know how to attack move, essentially. Anybody that doesn't is not going to be on the same page, and they won't get as much value out of a Rubik, because it's a lot more straightforward just to throw nukes and attack somebody while they're stunned until they die. But Rubik is a little different than that. At this point, I believe Shadowfiend should be too. He is. Shadowfiend picking up his level 2 here. Again, with our other Observer Ward down, now blocking the small camp, we really should be going to kill the Shadow Fiend, but again, I didn't realize. I assumed that he would be back by now. 
tried to lift the the venge there, but since most of our trees are missing. Um, well, he actually wrote my SF is farming. I don't even think I noticed that at the time. I'm doing a side pull here just because the creep wave is in a bad place. If the creep wave is in a better place for us, we can keep getting kills. So to do that, we need to reclaim the where the wave is. And while that's doing the side pull, it's a good time to hide. I very likely got spotted there. Chachi will get spotted because the creeps will walk right past him. I thought my allies would back me up a little bit here. Chachi needed a glimpse right there. It was the only way we got that kill. But he, he didn't glimpse instantly. With his salve, there's no way we can go for that kill. And now things are a little bad. I maybe should have ran to the right instead. I also could have salved a little bit earlier, perhaps. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And I, oh, and that's what, this is when I realized that the Shadow Fiend is on the high ground. I was like, what the heck? I was killed by a neutral Sayer. I should have bought out before I died. Um, that would have been better. But the cool part is that I basically made them all run across the map and waste a lot of time. Something that playing with Sexy Bambo taught me a lot was that when you're playing Rubik, like, you can do aggressive things like that, where you make people go dumb places, because you always have the opportunity to lift them and throw them somewhere else. You can cliff them in a variety of areas. There's a lot of really annoying things that you can do as Rubik. But what I should have done after I solved is I should have ran past left, past the Venge most likely, and just escaped. Because I very likely could have gotten away from him without needing to run all the way deep into the jungle. Should obviously stack whenever possible. Just checking to see if the SF was still here and he actually had left, so... It's a pretty big mistake by me that, that we let him get away, because that was an easy kill advantage that we could have had. And he is behind, but he's only level 3, so he's actually not doing as awful as he could be doing his 9 CS. So we could we could have kept him cliffed for at least like a minute or two, dedicated like one support to keeping him there, and then when he's about to escape, we kill him. Or we re-cliff him, for example. That does a lot more economic damage than, than what we actually did. If he was still level 1 and just now got down, that would have been great. But we didn't get that out of him. So they tried to stack the camp over here. So I'm just in a position to cancel it if needed. If they come up to the creep wave, we kill them. I don't know if they have an observer ward in our area. It looks like they don't based on me looking at the map right now, but it may not be the case. We can also see very far nighttime due to having a Luna, so that's kind of nice. Checked for a sentry. His sentry actually does block, by the way. I'm gonna do a lift here, pretty easy kill. a little bit too far forward and you have to profit on those mistakes and go for the kills. Protecting the Luna is basically all we need to do in this aggressive lane. If they had a real aggressive trial lane, things might be a little bit more scary for us, but um, they really they really don't have one. SF doesn't really work from a standpoint like that. Just got my cooldown. Tachi did a mango. Should have been hitting this guy a little bit earlier. As soon as the glimpse came out. Alright, I was able to get the kill. It was a good fight. Really nice glimpse by Chachi there. Uh, but looks like Wind Ranger cleaned him up. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dami got killed here, and I probably should have just teleported, but. As you can see on the map, I ran through an Observer Ward, so they knew that I was coming here. And then I also used a stun that I probably shouldn't have used. Nice power shot by the Wind Ranger there. Well, we basically just gave Wind Ranger like a buttload of kills. He has five kills here. Which really shouldn't have happened. If anything, I should have just... I, I didn't feel like I needed to TP. I felt like I could get back safely. At this point, I realized like there was a ward. Because we're up approximately there. Because by the time... The place where they basically collapsed on me was around that point, so I, I made it, it was clear that their movements told me where the ward was. I think about that a lot now, um, by playing support. I was thinking about TPing here, just in case. Slardar is going to end up being here. I probably should have right-clicked the Slardar first before I started throwing my abilities, because things got a little close. We do end up, I do end up killing him, but... Support TPs like that are actually really good on Rubik because you do have such huge kill potential. It kind of comes down to them being under tower because with Telekinesis, you give your tower an extra two attacks. Again, that's the most valuable thing about Telekinesis. It's not, yeah, it does no damage, 
but you throw somebody back so that you can further make them out of position and give you more chances to attack and do damage to them. That is where Rubik ends up being really useful. So I almost hit 6 from that, which is pretty good considering the time. Um, I get a kill as well, so that's going to allow me to buy my Arcane Boots. Um, this is maybe a game that I should have gone Tranquils instead because they have 3 minus armor sources in Slardar, Venge, and SF, but with the Arcane Boots I can have a lot more mana to do the things that I want to do. I kind of felt like Tom, Dami should have ulti this one here because he did have his Eclipse. And it kind of turned out that, yes, he actually should have Eclipse. But I think he just ended up eclipsing that guy instead. Give him a little bit more mana in case. Now, normally when you lift somebody, you should send them in the direction that you want them to go instantly, rather than what I did there. Because basically what I did is I turned and lifted, and then I started walking, and then I turned and... Um, I used my smoke here, but the... The Wind Ranger Kami as well. I wasted a smoke, which is a little bad. But when you lift somebody, you usually want to instantly throw them the direction that you want them to go. I technically wasted time there by lifting and then running and then turning again throw. I turned twice to, th to use my ability once rather than just turned once. So when you lift somebody, instantly choose the target. Usually what happens is I lift and I get scared and then I say, uh, what way should I throw them? And then I turn back and throw them. But that wastes time. So I mess that up. I pretty consistently mess that up when I play Rubik and I'm escaping people or trying to escape people. So I got killed again. Um, getting a kill on the Slar is probably pretty easy. I have to make sure that I'm my position is relevant to where the amp damage is, because again it gives vision. So I have to pretend like Jug is an enemy hero. And then I just have to make sure that the Slardar gets ahead of us, because I know my Jug has ulti. Oh, some enemy heroes unfortunately. I had to lift him there. I end up dying for that one, which is not terrible. I'd rather die for that gank than, than my allies. This just doesn't look like a good fight now. Unless... He used his Omni Slash as well, which is... A little unfortunate he didn't get the kill, but... You know, there's only so much you can do about that. So I don't feel too bad about that gank, but delaying my 6 is a, uh, a little bit of a problem here. Because again, it, it makes me a decent hero, but not an amazing hero. And with Rubik, you should actually roam a lot. Despite my high amount of deaths, I feel pretty good about my game thus far. Um, if we check my net worth, I am quite a bit higher than my opponents. Because we got a lot of kills in lane, right? And one of my deaths was a suicide as well, so... I think 3-3-3 three, three, and three is okay for a support in the early game. I'm just going to nuke the Wind Ranger here to limit the wave a bit and pull the creep wave past. I was hoping to steal a spell from him since I did hit 6, but unfortunately I didn't get in range. So Illusion Rune top. Observer Ward and Smoke, pretty common items for support in the mid game. I should be looking bottom to see if I need a TP. Looks like Jug's in trouble. He also looks very dead. Alright, we saw the gank coming top, so we wanted to show up for that one. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So now I stole Magic Missile. And as you can see, I instantly do like way more damage. And I was also able to land a stun and lead that into another stun. And now I've got an ability. I basically have 3, 6, 7, 8 skill points. I'm essentially like a level 8 hero with the ability to steal an ultimate. I do 250 here. I do 210 here. So I'm hitting for about 500 damage every 12 seconds. Which is amazing. Really, really good. And with Arcane Boots as well. Um, I've got enough mana to be able to afford to do this all the time. So now I'm like very, very dangerous in terms of a uh, gank potential. It's a great loosen beam from Dami there. And look, look at the damage output, it's just like so good. Dami ultied for that one, he didn't have to because I had Fade Bolt, but. I'm trying to hope to get close enough to land a stun, but. Was not able to. My mana's a little bit low anyways. I only have Radiant's enough for about two attack. spells. But at this point, I feel really good. Um, Magic Missile can do a lot of work in the early game. It's one of the things that makes Venge really strong. And coupling that with Fade Bolt and another Antelkinesis is just really good to have. I dropped my Arcane Boots here because he's bottling me. And that will give me a lot more mana. Since mana is really important. I basically got like 
250 mana out of that or something like that. If you can glimpse. I'd rather just use Magic Missile here than a Telekinesis. And the reason for that is because if I use Telekinesis, then I'm not applying damage. So for an, a gank like that, it's more mana efficient for me just to use Magic Missile, which is why I just use Magic Missile there. But I'm still at a point where I feel very, very strong in terms of type fights and things. I'm, I should be worried about people coming from the jungle, but because TA is up there, I'm pretty safe in my positioning here. And with that, we can just right-click down the tower. Can you through people as well? Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Now my my next item is something you can maybe argue about. Um, kind of depends on what people like. Some people will go for. I think Chachi has that kill without me. Oh man, he's not gonna get it. He could have wanded there and ultied. Man, Slick's not having a blink dagger, right? I'm so slow. I'm gonna go try to help him with this kill. Unfortunately, my Fable only had one person, but... Got ultied by the Winter Wyvern. I wanted to go see if I could kill this uh, Wind Ranger. Was able to get him. I shouldn't have nuked him for damage there, I think that was a mistake, because I, I basically did nothing by doing that. But I, I've juked here, I'm gonna get back to base, and I can buy a Blink Dagger. I also stole his Winter's Curse, so at that point I basically saw that my Magic Missile was almost off, was almost gone, because it only lasts for 180 seconds at level 1. So it only lasts for 3 minutes. So with that being, with the Magic Missile going away, I might as well steal a spell from Winter Wyvern, and the last spell he cast was actually Zulti, so now I get his ulti. The only downside is that Winter's Curse is mostly used as like a 2.5 second instant stun in the early game. It doesn't do that much damage in terms of people attacking each other. So it's a very good setup, but it's not really amazing for much else past that. I also maybe shouldn't have shown myself on the creep wave here because the TA was coming forward. I could basically just not show myself because now they know that I'm mid and I also revealed the fact that I have a blink dagger, which is a mistake. I probably shouldn't have done that. Just because it gives that moment, it gives it gives us that advantage of unpredictability, where they don't realize that I can instantly initiate, and they won't have to. They'll they'll now be able to adjust how they're playing. It's considering using Winter's Curse there, but we didn't need to. Um, he was able to get his wind run off, which is a little unfortunate. It forced um, us to use Eclipse on the Luna, but. Again, no, no need to use Winter's Curse, just a simple lift nuke. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Love the arcane boots this game. Dyer's top Got a lot of value out of them. Go into the bot lane to set up a gank here. Should have uh, ultied the Avenge instead. Let's set up a little bit. My raise was able to get the the Avenge. Oh, I raised. I should have lifted. I don't know why I did that. That was a mistake. Pretty good fight though. Um, my Winter's Curse wasn't amazing. It did disable them, which was kind of nice. But I should have put the ulti on the Venge because that because then it would have been a slaughter hitting a Venge instead of a support Venge that's behind hitting a slaughter. Radiant I don't know if it would have made that much difference. The attack. yeah, would have the Slar had a tread, so I think that would have been much better. Shadow raise. This is a long raise, by the way. So decent to have. There's still better abilities, but. Does 325 damage.
And generally you want more mana than a little bit of regen. And this is kind of the scary thing about Rubik. Like looking at my hero right now, I don't look very survivable. I have 834 HP. It's almost entirely based on my ability to disable my opponents. So what I'm trying to do here is trying to steal a better spell. Either of these heroes would be pretty good to steal. This is the ability that I really want, and I'm able to get it. Slither and Crush. And doing things like this is really important in my opinion. Just occasionally going to a lane and stealing a good spell. I figured he had Blink. He also can see me. It's pretty dangerous though. Again, my HP is very, very low. So it's pretty simple for me to, to get killed. Um, kind of what needed to happen there, in my opinion, is the Venge should have... I thought I had lift there, I think that's why I did that. Missed my stun. Radiance top tower is under attack. It was wise of him to walk away from me because it prevented him from Radiance getting stun followed up. Unfortunately, the, the Shadow Fiend was leaving. So this point, I might as well just go heal. But this is basically what you should do. You should move around the map, stealing good abilities, and trying to outplay your opponents. Getting kills, things like that. I definitely should keep the ability. It's very strong. Radiance middle tower has very low cooldown. Doesn't do amazing damage. I think it's only 250 physical or something. 225 physical damage. Radiance so it's not... Physical attack. damage is generally worse in, in terms of nuke ability than, than magic damage. Not always, but in the late game generally, yes, because people will buy a lot of armor items. It only works for Slaughter so well is because his ultimate is magic, or his ultimate reduces armor, which make, makes his crush do more. So now that I have a force staff, I can engage in different ways, basically. Um, I can blink to initiate, and then I can force out. Chachi looked quite dead there, so. Checking to see if anybody is shifting over. This is really stupid. It looks like I was trying to re steal the the stun because I'm getting on cooldown. That bash was huge. I should have stunned him. Yeah. yeah, that works. And I messed up here. About here I was like, you know, Slaughter could be chasing me. And all I had to do there was stun him first. And I would have lived. Because I had Slither and Crush, right? It's on the same cooldown as his. Or, well, it's separate, obviously, but it's about the same. Chachi's follow-up should guarantee the kill, though. Um, but I, I shouldn't have allowed that guy to stun me. I should have stunned him first. But I didn't think about it until in time. I was just like, you know, this guy could be crazy and be coming to kill me. Yeah, he's not going to win a fight with the Luna. Actually, might just die now. Roshan has fallen to the rage. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Not sure what's hiding in there. Oh, I was anticipating an invisible Wind Ranger chasing potentially. Radiant structures are fortified. Don't really want to go back and heal Radiant's or go back and defend towers. I'd rather attack. go fight. I could really justify an urn or a bracer this game though. My HP is so painfully low. If they, like, ever initiate on me, I just die. Perhaps should have right-clicked him once more. And I went all in to try to get him, but I didn't, so... I think the TA... I should have pinged before I blinked, because uh, the TA was a little bit later than me. But I also should have right-clicked one more time. If I would have right-clicked one more time, we would have gotten the kill. 
So, moderate mistake for me there. That was a communication error, or less than a play one, basically. And that's important to keep in mind, like, just because the TA didn't read my mind is not the TA's fault. In a, in a way, she would have been able to read my mind if she was at the same level as me, basically. Because it comes down to this, it's pretty simple. If, if he saw the opportunity the same time that I saw the opportunity, he would have understood that I also saw the opportunity and would have gone for the kill, right? But the problem is he didn't see the opportunity, he didn't feel it the same time that I felt it, so I went in early. So to compensate for that, I am forced to communicate more to keep up with that. Which sometimes sucks to do because you're like, oh, everybody should just be on the same wavelength as me. But it's not the reality of playing Dota, especially in pub games. You should always communicate properly to allow your opponents to be on the same page as you, or your allies to be on the same page as you. Just wanted to steal a spell here and I got a good one. I was able to get uh, level 4 magic missile. Luna killed SF. SF killed Luna and gave her 1200 gold. Or Dummy gave him 1200 gold. My HP is still pretty poor here. Uh, building an eggs is pretty much the straightforward item at this point because I have all the mobility I need. I just need a little bit of raw HP. I was anticipating heroes being bottom. Just waiting to see if somebody will show up. Unfortunately, I do not have detection because I'm a bad support, but I really should be carrying sentries and things like that. It's no excuse not to have them. I knew the SAR would be coming in, so... I was able to get amp damage, so it was really good. We did not kill SF there. A little unfortunate. Kind of wanted to go for the Wind Ranger, but in reality, he's probably going to run by the time we get there. So now we just need to juke a little bit and hide in the trees and look for my next initiation. Not sure I liked putting that ward there. Would have liked this hill instead. Looks like I did both of them, but then I decided against it because we killed the tower so fast. Dyer's bottom tower I don't like my attack. positioning here. I feel like I put Dyer's myself in a very dangerous situation. I do end up staying alive, but it's important you kill little creeps like that, by the way, because you know that they're giving vision on you. So it allows your opponents to plan to initiate. Tower is under attack. Um, even though I did get amp damage, I think it's better to have Slytherin Crush, so I'm okay with this. Stuns are almost always more reliable than just being able to amp somebody's amp somebody's damage. And he didn't he didn't protect his uh, Winner's Curse again, so. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. It's a good example of Winter's Curse usage, Dyer's basically. You're just using it to stun half the time. It was a little scary, but he hesitated slightly, so I figured that I could actually finish the TP. At this point, I definitely have to go back and heal since I'm missing mana. Dyer's middle barracks I maybe attack. should to try to cancel this TP, but I wouldn't have been able to because I, I used my stun initially. In some ways I hurt my team by going back, but it looks like it was actually good because I, I protected my tier 2 while my team was able to finish the Rex mid, which maybe sh they shouldn't have allowed us to do that or anything like that, but it, it did happen. Eggs is definitely the item here. Uh, I could maybe justify like Ghost Seth, or Ghost Scepter, maybe, but I was also thinking about some other like ridiculous item. I was like, I'm doing really well, I have a ton of gold. My net worth is like stupidly high. I could buy something ridiculous. I was like, maybe I'll buy like a Lincoln Sphere or something. And then eventually I just decided like, you know what, I should really just get uh, an Aghanims because in reality my HP is too low. It's going to be an easier build up. 
it's really safe. There we go. And now my HP looks good. But before, I definitely did not. I should also probably be with my team. Most likely. They could use some no field, you know? 15% magic resistance? That's like an old school cloak. Check to see if anybody had a bottle first and could not see one, so. And the TA was dead. He's doing a little bit of baiting. Got a sprint. Ooh, look how fast I am. It's kind of fun. I was kind of surprised the slaughter missed his stun, though. Maybe he knew that I was there. It didn't seem like it. I'm curious. I want to go back and watch that from his perspective, because I, I don't know if I gave vision. Before. I think I did, didn't I? Because the Luna technically has really big nighttime vision. Uh, let's go, slaughter. Okay, he definitely saw me. He saw me twice. He was hoping to catch both of us, and then the Luna aura f faded. I think that's him being upset. It's like, why the hell does this guy have Lunar Scur or Winter's Curse still? So the thing that I messed up there was I basically forgot to realize that Amplify Damage is based on the the user's vision, um, not based on typical like night vision. So because Lunacy is so big at nighttime, he got tons of spots. He got to see me many times. He knew that I was there. So if anything, it was just really stupid of him to initiate. He was hoping to stun both of us, kill the Luna within two seconds, and then escape. But the reality of what happened is that if he misses stun on either of us, then he, he dies. So so now I'm about a thousand away from my Aghanim Scepter, so at this point I'm usually a little greedy about farming. Um, just because of the fact that finishing it gives me an extra plus 10 to all stats, which is obviously very amazing to have. It's equivalent to like an ultimate orb, and it's only 900 more expensive. So it makes me a lot individually stronger. Not to mention that having the eggs is good to have. Um, the eggs also makes any ultimate ability that I steal eggs level. Unfortunately, there aren't very many this game. It's basically Focus Fire and Venge Ulti and Winter Range Ulti. Did I say that already? Unfortunately, I stole Sprint again. Don't want to steal the spell because I know he just used spring. Do you get a gem though? Pretty much always worth trading uh, TPs for TPs for gem. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I should have anticipated that. Got crushed this time. Felt good. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's engine. This basically puts my survivability at a at a good place. Radiant victory. All right, so that's Rubik. I actually felt pretty good about that game. Um, in terms of a replay commentary. Um. It was one of my better Rubik games. Obviously, the people I'm playing against weren't amazing, and uh, I'm I'm not the best Rubik player, but it, I, I felt okay about this game. Uh, Rubik's just tough because you have to think about all your opponents all the time. You have to think like, look at this. You basically have to say like, oh look, our team is grouped. Ru Magnus is gonna RP right now, and you have to get ready for that. Or you have to say like, Bat is about to blink. I need to instantly lift Telkinesis because we can win a fight. Like that's one of the reasons Rubik's so amazing. It's because if you're faster than your opponents and you predict what they're going to do, then it's easy for you to click on them correctly. Like, if your opponent's like, okay, I'm going to Batrider blink lasso and pull him back. But if you're sitting on the other side, you're thinking, Batrider's about to go on one of us. Who's he going to go on? He's probably going to go on the guy in the front. So you sit within telekinesis range that, so that as soon as Batrider blinks, you lift him. And then you just kill Batrider and you win the whole game, basically. Because then you get a Rax because you win a fight, basically. You kill one hero. You take a Rax, and then you get a Rax because you lift it on time instead of letting him lasso. So being able to predict what your opponents are going to do is huge. And you can do that if you're not against a Batrider. It can be against, like, a Magnus. If Magnus blinks in, just lift him. 
or if Magnus blinks in, lift him, steal the spell. And then even if he RPs in time before you lift, then at least you steal RP afterwards. And you can wait till his team comes and groups up, and then you blink aggressively and you RP three heroes or four heroes. And then it's like, okay, your heroes get unstunned, then the fight actually starts because it's been evened out, and then you win the fight. Like, things like that are so big for Rubik. And I, I played more of, like, a roaming style Rubik this game than I played, like, a team fight style. So you maybe didn't get to see the team fight stuff, but you wouldn't be able to see that unless I did, like, uh, maybe a solo queue Rubik game would be a better way to, to get that. A uh, more even game, basically. Party MMR games are usually not like that. So, all right, that's it for the Rubik game. I hope you guys enjoyed, uh, and I hope you guys learned a lot. He's a very strong hero, occasionally picked in the pro scene, sometimes to moderately, I say. Sometimes to moderately is my range. And uh, that's all for me today. Uh, hopefully I'm going to do a stream tomorrow, and I'll tune in. Hope you guys tune in for that one. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.